Hi friend David here, back to Church Tech Hacks. <clears throat> so this is my monitor wedge DIY for the church. I'm trying this out to see if it works or not, and um, I was wondering where that color temperature shift is from. Don't worry about it. Um, and here's where we're at. So I built a crossover. <gasps> bunch of components on a board um, with a bunch of wires. It might not be the prettiest job ever, but this is the first time I've done it, and I'm gonna follow up and research like how to do this better for the future. But the fact is, it's built, it works, um, and it might look like a mess of wires. That's simply because um, I've got leads to two speak on jacks for the sides of the speaker. Then let me see if I get in front of that window if that helps. Then I've got leads to both the high driver and the low driver coming off, and one of them's quite long. <laughs> Oops. So crossovers built and also spent a bunch of time, actually not that much time this week, building the cabinet. So I bought some Baltic birch online from this uh, site, what was it called? Totalwoodstore.com. Um, was it more expensive than I would have paid locally? Probably. But at the end of the day, it's a decent half inch Baltic birch. Um, that's 12 millimeter. It's not really half inches. It's in metric. It has a stamp on it on one spot. Um, they cut it to you for you, by the way. And I designed this to be 15 inches wide. And um, and I think I'll put dimensions on. It's for non-commercial use. The crossover is you'll have to get that from AmpsLab.com. But I will put dimensions of what I did on ChurchTechHacks.com um, on a post accompanying this later. But I went ahead, and what I did was I first cut the polygons. I cut this all with my circular saw, by the way. If you have a table saw that can tilt the blade, though, much better choice. So I cut my sides, did two of those, tried to make them as close as possible. They're not perfect. And then I went ahead, and I cut all the pieces except the front piece, the baffle, where the speaker mounts, okay? So I cut everything else around the outside. I used these, and I measured these angles to try to cut them well with my circular saw. So, so, it, it worked okay. Um, and then I put it all together. So I basically just started with one of these on the, on the table, one of these sides, and I screwed and glued, and I used Craig screws to clamp it and hold it together. Um, I do like my Craig jig a lot, if you're not familiar with that. It's a pocket hole jig, just giggle, Google, just giggle it. It's that time of day where we just giggle things. Um, and then once I got it all together, I measured for the baffle, cut it, cut the center out. If you have a router, you can make a jig so that it doesn't look like this, but it's a clean circle. This is me freehanding it with a jigsaw because I tried to use a jig and I messed it up twice and I said, you know what, I'm wasting too much wood. I did cut some strips of the Baltic birch that go under all the way around them. You know, there's a little gap of a couple inches at each side. To support this baffle. I don't know if it's necessary, but it can't hurt. And then, boom, cut the hole out. Good to go. I cut it out. I made sure it was off center a little bit. I don't know if it matters, but I figured if it was center, it would be more likely to cause standing waves and, and any problems there. Um, so here's my next steps. Next steps are, I'm going to finish this out. I'm going to prime it with some primer. And I'm going to Duratex it. If you're not familiar, Duratex is a speaker uh, building. It's a speaker, you know, paint. It's really tough. It's good stuff. Then, um, actually, before I do that, I got to cut the handle out of the side. And on the other side, I'm going to put a tripod mount so it can be a small portable speaker. And if needed, but it also kind of works as a handle. You could stick your fingers in it. And then after that, I'm going to put it all together, plug everything in take it to the church and test it. Actually, before that, I think I'm going to get with a friend of mine, borrow a measurement mic, and just see how this thing measures. Um, I plugged the driver into it today and listened to it, and I really liked what I heard. I don't think I'm going to need to put any dampening material inside of it, like insulation, but that option's there if I should need it. Um, but I would love to see how this thing measures. Um, over at Amps Lab, that guy, uh, Michael, he had posted some measurements of what he got, out of his box, which was not wedge shaped, but square, but the same size. And, you know, I'm just curious to see how this will turn out. So thanks for coming on this journey with me. Um, I'm sure there will be more as I continue to test this. I listened to it today. Like I said, I really like how it sounds, um, but I'm the guy who made it. So keep that in context as well. 
I'm definitely biased, but I can't wait to get this in front of some real musicians who have played. Um, I'm so we're so thankful at my church since we're in Nashville. We have a lot of musicians who have played um, anywhere, all over the world, which is great because they have played in the worst of audio conditions and the best of audio conditions and everything in between, and they know the difference. Um, so I'm excited to get this in front of them, excited to finish it, and I will keep you guys posted. Have a great day. Be sure to subscribe here if you're not, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.